Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to review the brand new Nege Max 4 and the E80 laser module. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the new industrial grade laser engraver by Nege. And as for every new series, we see something that makes the machine more efficient. Last year, they added auxiliary controls in their, their series for the Pro and the Max version. And this year, beside the same auxiliary control, they have added a plug for the rotary axis. And the most exciting part in this uh, new series is the uh, Z-axis control, which will allow you to rise and lower the laser module and do more. Now, before getting any further, uh, just a quick note, I've received this machine free of charge. However, I'm not being paid by Nege and neither any one of its affiliate. And as usual, I like to keep my video reviews unbiased. Therefore, all of the opinion that I'm about to share with you in this video, they represent my honest opinion, my honest thought about this particular product. So with this out of the way, let's carry on. This machine has a simple uh, traditional design and the electric green color, in my opinion, makes it look a bit more professional and elegant. The framing components have been machined with tight tolerances, which allows the machine to be squared and rigid. Other industrial touches here and there makes the machine to perform uh, better and professionally, including the linear rail for the x-axis, which is the fast axis, the belt tensioners for the y-axis, and the set screw adjustment for the roller, which is very reliable and lowers the chance of the trolley getting loose and the gantry start wobbling over time, like could happen with a traditional eccentric nuts design. Now, if there is something that I really like about Nege's machine, starting from the previous series, uh, compared to many other machines that I've been reviewing in this channel, is the auxiliary controls. Not only you get to control air assist for an electro valve, which allows you to plug in the hose from your compressor or airline, but you also get a relay to control other auxiliaries, supposedly an extraction fan, but you could plug on it whatever you want. Now, the game changer in this machine is the motorized Z-axis, which controls the height of the laser module. This will allow you to perform the focus adjustment and much, much more. For example, you can set specific heights for different layers. So, if you need to engrave, you can focus onto the surface of your sheet. If you need to cut, you can drop the focus into the material. If you need to cut a thicker sheet, uh, you can set a multi-passes layer and you can drop your laser module by a few millimeters for every pass. Or if you want to engrave a thicker line, you can simply raise the laser module so that the focus goes out of the material and the effective spot size onto the material uh, is wider. And even you can perform 3D engraving. However, you will need a CAM software for that in order to produce your toolpath. Another great thing about the uh, Z-axis is that it will allow you to do some plotting, either with a pen, which is the attachment that you will find in the box, or with a blade, which is sold separately. And this will allow you to uh, cut thin sheets like cardboard, paper, and vinyl. This is something that I will uh, uh, try to get my hand on so that I can show you guys how it performs. So with this machine, not only you get a laser uh, engraver and cutter, but you also get a plotter, which is great. The machine came with the Nege E80 laser module. This is also their latest innovative uh, laser module. And I have to say right up, it looks a great piece of engineering. It looks great and it feels great. And this is also by far the most compact and quiet quad diet laser module I've seen. Plus, the spot size is ridiculously small compared to other 20 and even 10 watt laser module that I've tested. And the capability is also very good. Speaking of which, let's get into the capability. As usual, I run some testing so as to assess the performance of the machine with the materials that I use the most. Uh, now, for the testing in particular, for the cutting, I've run the machine with air from a proper compressor at four bars or about 50 PSI. Now here, I had to implement a new testing in order to find the perfect Z-axis uh, for your engravings and cutting. I did it on a 3mm birch plywood with an initial value of minus 43mm and I found that 2mm into the material makes for the cleanest and tiniest cut. 
Now, if there is something new that you will need to do uh, starting with this machine is to work with the Z-axis. Now, it is nothing complicated, however, there will be a little bit of setup uh, both from the hardware and the software side of things. And I have already uploaded a video covering just that, how to work with the Z-axis with this specific machine. So if you need help in that, you will see a link popping up right in the corner. Going ahead with the testing, um, cutting a 3mm or 1 8 of an inch birch playwood cleanly at 500mm per minute, 95% in power. Now you could go as fast as 550 to 600mm per minute, but you will end up with stringing on the backside, which will leave your part with rough edges. Therefore, that is not something that you want to do. So I would go conservatively, not faster than 500mm per minute, and even drop uh, to 470, 480 millimeters per minute to get a good and consistent result. Then, 3 millimeters MDF, I had the good result at 500 millimeters per minute, 90% in power. 3.2 millimeters acrylic in a single pass at 300 millimeters per minute, 90%. 1.5 millimeters ABS on a single pass again, 1200 millimeters per minute, 90% in power. As for the maximum depth, I was able to uh, go through 18 mm pine wood in three passes at 250 mm per minute, 95% power, with a step down of one millimeter per each pass. And I'm sure that it could go even farther or deeper. A single pass, in fact, uh, was able to go through eight mm, which is visible on the cut edge of the timber. Engraving on birch playwood, as you can see, produces good results all the way up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. So you simply need to choose the color tone that you like and to go for it. I also tried engraving on MDF and it was able to produce visible results all the way up to the machine's top speed, which is 24,000 millimeters per minute, which is crazy for a diode laser. I then tackled some real projects. Here, unfortunately, I didn't have a bed large enough to take advantage of the size of the machine. Therefore, I had to break down my projects into multiple sheets. The performance is great. The cuttings and engravings were good and consistent throughout, from the first to the last, without any sign of power loss, which is something very, very important. All right, let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved, starting with the pros and the price. Now, I think that the price is fair. Now, this is not a cheap machine. Um, however, given the function, the power, and the Z-axis, in my opinion, is okay. Then, the machine is built in auxiliary control, uh, so you can automatically control your air, your fan, and more. The module is built in air nozzle, and you even get to choose between two different designs, which are included in the package. The nozzle is also very easy to dismantle, so you can clean the lens quickly and easily. The machine is very quiet, and I would say that this is the quietest machine I've heard so far. Then, the machine works also offline with light burn, um, and so you can send your projects even wirelessly offline and to let the machine execute without being around. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't show you this in this video uh, since I haven't gotten a wireless card on my PC, but I'm going to get one soon and so I will be able to uh, show you how to work wirelessly and how to send projects to your machine. Let me now tell you what I think it should be improved instead. Now, the frame has an array of tapped holes. I'm sure that you've seen it in the video and in the picture. These are for a cutting bed. Unfortunately, they only offer blades for the machine in the extended form. And so it would be nice if they can also sell blades for the machine as it is in standard size. Second, it would be nice to make the nozzle a little bit shorter in profile so you get a little bit more clearance from your sheet. Um, so you will be able to use magnets, for example, to calm down your material with a lower risk of collision. And also, a shorter profile will allow you to go deeper if you need to. Now, something that I miss from the previous series is the accessory that were previously included in the package. So the accessory that would allow you to uh, take advantage of the uh, auxiliary controls. So that is uh, the emergency button, the relay, and also the electro valve for air assist. 
All right, what I didn't like, uh, well, there are a couple of things that I'm putting into the cons, although there are things that can actually be also improved, starting with the main board. Now, the main board is still moving uh, with the machine. This is something that should definitely be changed. Either the main board has to be fixed on a fixed part of the frame without moving, or at least the power and data cable connector should be in a fixed position so that you lower down the risk of ripping off your connector from the PCB of the main board or even uh, the machine moving if the cables are catching up somewhere. Now a way to go around it is to get a drag chain to make a couple of extensions and to basically locate your connectors in a fixed point the same way I did on my NAJ3 Pro. Then second thing, very similar, the wiring harness. Now the wiring harness that goes over the gantry, it's actually flying. Uh, this year they've decided to basically stick the wiring harness on a sleeve and then inside of the sleeve there is some bar which kind of tried to keep it up but truthfully it's going down uh, and so uh, eventually you risk to catch onto your bed or material at some point. So I don't know why they decided to dismiss uh, the drug chain with aluminum profile which was available on their previous version but it would be great if they re-implement that. All right, let me now uh, tell you whether you should buy it, consider it or discard it. Now, uh, considering all of the pros and cons that I've discussed and especially an industrial grade machine, a Z-axis, uh, the auxiliary controls, the ability to work wirelessly and offline, and also the power and the spot size of the laser module, I would definitely throw in the cart. However, if you go for it, I would definitely recommend you to at least get also the electro valve so you can control air assist and a couple of drug chains so you can rearrange the wiring harness in a, a cleaner way and less riskier way. All right, and this is pretty much all. Now, I hope you found my video informative. If you liked it, click the thumb up button below and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!